Good morning, church family. Welcome to our online service, and thank you for joining us this morning. We celebrate today as Trinity Sunday. Let us praise and worship Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in our service. Let us sing our opening hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, hymn number 64. Our triune God is always with us and is ready to hear us, heal us, reshape us, and reform us. Let us humbly come to the Holy Trinity and confess our sins and ask for God's transforming power. Let us pray together. Triune God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, you created us in your image and breathed your Holy Spirit into us. We all carry your vision and nature within us, and each of us is precious and equal in your eyes. If we follow your example, in spite of our differences, we will be one with you and your creation. You sent Jesus into the world in order to save us and to show the way to eternal life. Jesus accepts us regardless of our background, race, nationality, culture, class, and personality, and it commands us to create harmony and peace on earth. O oh, Holy Spirit, help us to be born again and to meet this Jesus and experience heaven's limitless love and timeless grace. Lord, during this challenging time, appear to us in forms we cannot ignore and lead us down the path which transforms our world and heals your blessed creation. Amen. Now, let us have a moment of a silent meditation and a prayer. Hear the words of assurance. Our gracious Lord listens to our cry and sees our tears and sends the Holy Spirit to console us, heal us, and empower us. God's love is unconditional, just, and fair. With a heartfelt gratitude, let us lift up the Lord's Prayer together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's anthem, Eternal Father Strong to Save, will be delivered by Rex and Deborah Enderlin. Rex and Deborah? <laughs> Thank you, Rex and Deborah. Today's children's message will be delivered by Sue Predis. Sue? Good morning, children. I hope you are enjoying the warmer weather and you've gotten a chance to go outside and enjoy all the beauty of nature. The trees have green leaves, the flowers are in bloom, and the birds are singing. This weekend is known by many as the unofficial start of summer. Are you anxious for summer to be here? Well, we do have a few more weeks until it's officially here. The other name for this weekend is Memorial Day, and that's what we're going to speak about. Memorial Day began in 1868 after the Civil War to remember and honor the soldiers that died while fighting to keep our country together. It was called Decoration Day then because people decorated the graves of the soldiers with flowers and flags. The holiday later became known as Memorial Day as more wars were fought and more soldiers were honored and remembered for their sacrifice. It was celebrated on May 30th for a long time until Congress decided to observe it on the last Monday in May in 1970. There are many traditions on Memorial Day. There are parades, there are people visiting cemeteries and putting flowers and flags on graves. There are concerts, there are ceremonies. And people like to wear the colors of our country and display our flag. 
The flag should be flown at half staff until noon on Memorial Day. And it is strongly urged that all people all over our country observe a moment of remembrance at three o'clock, their local time. I brought a little soldier here today. It was given to me by Pastor Pock on Veterans Day, which is another military holiday celebrated in November. It is a time when we salute all of our soldiers who have served in the military. And it reminds me of all the people that are serving us right now and making sacrifices on our behalf. That means they are serving and protecting all the people who call this country home. They love our country and have decided to make sacrifices to serve in many ways. They also understand that they may be put in harm's way. They are willing to serve for all of us. It is re important to remember the soldiers that gave their lives so that we can live in our great country. We can honor them with thankful hearts on this special day. We can also pray for our soldiers that are serving in our country today and for those who have served in the past. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven who sent us Jesus so that we could learn to love you and each other, please help us to learn how to solve our differences without fighting. Help us to put your teachings into action. Please bless and be with our troops. We are grateful for their service and sacrifice. We pray for peace around the world. Amen. Thank you, Sue, for your interesting children's message this morning. Thank you. Now let us share our joys and lift up our concerns and prayers. We confirmed five students via online service last Sunday. Now they are all full members of our church. Congratulations. It's time for all of us to enjoy this long Memorial Day weekend. Please remember all those who serve and served our country. Here are some concerns and prayer requests. Michael Clanton's uncle, Patrick Flanagan, passed away last Tuesday. Michael asked our church to pray for his family during this difficult time. Please continue to pray for all these friends for their speedy recovery. Tom Chauvin, Phil Prettis, Bruce Smith, Helen Mulvihill, Ilona Turaka, Carolyn Ferry, Joan Schmidt, Rosemary Heiserer and her sister Amelia, Sun Bose and her brother Jung, Dorothy Lindsay, Ileana Surf and her family. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, as we commemorate Memorial Day tomorrow, we come before you with our humble hearts this morning. With the good memories and blessings, help us to remember all those saints who moved from earth to heaven. May the Holy Spirit guide us to move forward with their legacy of love and carry out our hope and the vision as the disciples of Jesus Christ the world. We believe that your Son lights the way for our faith journey and your stars push away the darkness. Now we lift up the prayers for our brothers and sisters who are suffering with their difficulties and challenges. You know who they are, where they are, and what their needs are. Oh Jesus, come now and bring comfort and healing to all of them. Inspire them with your wisdom and stimulate their hearts with your tender touch. O oh Lord, 
we continue to lift up our country, our world, and all people in it. We especially pray for the victims of the San Jose mass shooting at a light rail facility. We mourn with their families and friends. Lord, is it too much to ask for no more gun violence in our country? Too many innocent people are constantly killed. Lord, help us, please. Provide a heavenly wisdom to our leaders and lawmakers everywhere so that they can link us with all who seek your will, justice, peace, and harmony. We pray all this in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's lecture is Diane June, and she will read today's scripture lessons. Diane? Good morning. Our first reading is Isaiah 6, 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? The next reading is John 3, 1 to 17. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you were doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. How can someone be born when they're old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they're born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be, Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me in our next hymn, Lift High the Cross, United Methodist Hymnal number 159.
As you know, there are 39 books in the Old Testament. It's also called the Hebrew Scriptures and 27 books in the New Testament. Through all these 66 books, we know that God is trying to deliver his messages to the readers via different prophets, apostles, disciples, emperors, governors, and even ordinary people with the unique methods and important points. However, if we could pick one passage that contains all of God's important points, what would it be? Can you guess? In today's lectionary readings, the Gospel of John tells us the most famous single verse in the Bible. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It's certainly the condensed good news, the gospel in capsule. This verse is the essence and the core of our Christian belief. I am certain that most of you have memorized this verse by heart. However, we haven't dwelled on the context and the background of this verse. In what context did Jesus say this verse? Today, I'd like to focus on the person who had a real conversation with Jesus. And it is this person to whom Jesus had given the most valuable lessons in human history. This person is called Nicodemus. One particular day, he came to meet Jesus at night. Why did he come at night? Since he was a well-known noble man, he didn't want anyone to see or know that he was meeting with a countryman from Galilee who was known as a heretic by Jewish authorities. Status-wise, Nicodemus was far above Jesus and there was no connection between them. Nicodemus was a Pharisee and a leader of the Jews. He was a member of Sanhedrin, which is the highest ruling body of Jews at that time, maybe much more powerful than the United States Supreme Court. According to the commentaries, the Sanhedrin consisted of 70 men with the high priest as its chairman. The members came from the priesthood, from the scribes, from other elders among the aristocracy and some Pharisees. The body was usually dominated by priests, but the Pharisees were represented as Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Their primary function was to preserve and to keep the Hebrew law. Basically, the Hebrew law covers all dimensions of Jewish faith, life, tradition, and culture. Therefore, being a member of a Sanhedrin meant that this member reflected the highest status of power, authority, class, knowledge, and wealth, elitist among elites. Some modern scholars have assumed that Nicodemus may have been one of the team who was sent by temple authorities to examine John the Baptist's preaching. Therefore, even though the scripture didn't indicate it, Nicodemus may have already known Jesus and may have heard his preaching. Nicodemus was very impressed and curious about Jesus 
and wanted to meet him in person. This is probably why he came to meet Jesus this very night. Nicodemus was mentioned in three places in the Gospel of John. The first place is today's Gospel lesson in John chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. Jesus said to Nicodemus that no one can see the kingdom of God unless they were born again. Then he asked Jesus, how can someone be born when they were old? Jesus' explanation to Nicodemus was the theme of today's gospel lesson. And then Nicodemus appeared a second time in John chapter 7, verses 50 and 51. When his colleagues conspired to arrest Jesus, Nicodemus challenged them by saying, Does our law condemn anyone without first hearing him to find out what he is doing? Then his colleagues replied, Are you from Galilee too? Look into it, and you will find that a prophet does not come out of Galilee. The next time Nicodemus is mentioned is John chapter 19, verses 39 through 42. He appeared after the crucifixion of Jesus. He brought about 75 pounds of a mixture of myrrh and aloes. These were the customary embalming spices. And he assisted Joseph of Arimathea in preparing the body of Jesus for a proper Jewish burial. Each time Nicodemus appeared in John's Gospel, we could see his spiritual growth. The first time he came to meet Jesus, he was confused and didn't fully grasp what Jesus was talking about. Even though he was a highly educated scholar and intellectual religious law keeper, he didn't understand what spiritual rebirth was. He only knew the earthly life, but didn't know there was life after death. I assume that after returning home, Nicodemus probably had many sleepless nights to think about what Jesus said. Then, when Nicodemus found out that people and his colleagues tried to find loopholes to arrest Jesus. He defended Jesus. In other words, he thought it wasn't fair to judge Jesus without hearing his side of the story. We suspected that Nicodemus now found the truth in Jesus and his messages but he was not brave enough to come out and to do more for Jesus then. But when Nicodemus showed up at third time after Jesus' crucifixion, he was brave enough to come out in public and help Joseph of Arimathea bury Jesus properly with dignity. He no longer hid under the cover of darkness. He was no longer was afraid. When Jesus' disciples and public followers abandoned Jesus and ran away, Nicodemus was there for Jesus. As we see Nicodemus, we witness the progression of his faith. When someone meets Jesus and listens to him, his or her life changes. Once one truly looks into the eyes of Jesus and listens to his gentle voice. It is difficult to walk away. Meeting Jesus personally is the rebirth, born again, born anew, born from above, and a renewal experience. The new birth experience means that we leave all our religious dogma, habitual church-going, 
theological stubbornness, oppressive traditions, prejudice against all the isms, violent behaviors, reckless assumptions, perceptions, and judgments, and start all over again now with Jesus as our shepherd, light, and guide. If we do so, we will never see the world the same way again. With a new perspective, we can make the world a different place. We saw the progression in Nicodemus, but we also witnessed the changes in many biblical figures. When Apostle Paul met Jesus, he treated all he had as rubbish and devoted his life to Jesus and evangelized the world. After meeting Jesus, Peter had to wrestle with his prejudice against the Gentiles and went out to preach to them, love them, and heal them. When a dishonest tax collector, Zacchaeus, met Jesus, he promised to give half his money to the poor and repay fourfold anyone he had cheated. A Sumerian woman with five husbands and another man met Jesus and had a conversation with him. She became the first woman evangelist who spread the good news of meeting the Christ to her own town people. We can go on and on and on. However, the true question for us this morning is not what Nicodemus was searching for and how he changed his life. We needed to ask ourselves what we are searching for in our lives and how we should be changed. The good news from Jesus is that anyone and everyone who believes may have eternal life in Jesus. It doesn't matter who we are, where we came from, what race we belong to, how rich we are, how much education we received. The opportunity is open to all. If we truly listen to Jesus' teachings, Christianity is a very inclusive religion. There is no caste system, there is no bias, there is no status division, there is no string attached. There is hope. There is hope for each and every one of us. It gives me joy, vision, and hope. Hope, the invitation is for all who allow Jesus to their lives and are willing to follow Jesus' commandments. Never too late to join Jesus' movement either. Daytime or nighttime, early in one's life or late in one's life, Jesus welcomes anyone at any time. The other day, a colleague of mine from upstate New York area had sent me his church's e-newsletter, which included a witness from one of his parishioners. This young woman, Grace, is married to a man from non-Christian family. Her mother-in-law, Agnes, was not an easy person to talk about the Christian belief. She made fun of the churches and called the Christians hypocrites. A few weeks ago, Agnes had a heart attack, and now all her organs are so weak. Grace was so frustrated that her mother-in-law didn't want to open her heart to hear about Jesus and eternal life. However, the Lord gave Grace the heart of mercy and compassion for Agnes. So Grace has prayed hard and asked her church family to pray for her mother-in-law. A few days ago, a miracle happened. For the first time, Agnes 
sincerely and seriously listened to what Grace said. And then, by the grace of God, Agnes opened her heart to Jesus and accepted him as her savior. Hallelujah! Of course, I've heard numerous witnessings like that, but each one is so precious, worthy, and valuable. When I read it, my eyes were wet with tears. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Behold the way, the truth, the life that is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Let us seek him out as did Nicodemus. Let us be eager to meet Jesus personally. When we meet Jesus, he will change our lives. Believe it. Believe it. Now, even at this moment, Jesus stands at the door of our hearts and keep knocking. Do you hear him knocking? Knocking. Knocking. Please let him in. Amen. Now, let us sing our closing hymn, America the Beautiful, hymn number 696. Let us pray. People of God, in the Holy Trinity, we are one body, united and uniting. Varied gifts and justified hearts are preparing us for service. We have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Let us dare to speak the justice and act as inspired people. Go to the world and preach the gospel with your words and the deeds. Go in peace and bring peace to the world. 
Amen. Now, let me make a few announcements. The United Methodist Church of Lake Grand Kankama is happy to announce our loaves and fishes soup kitchen is now open every Tuesday at 5 p.m. To better serve the community, our emergency food pantry will be open Tuesday, June 1st and June 15th between the hours of 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. Our food pantry needs the following items. Chicken and beef broth, cans of chicken, boxed milk, laundry detergent, paper towels, toilet paper, and tissues. Our thrift shop, Martha's Place, is now open Monday and Tuesday, Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Come and see our selection of summer apparel at bargain prices. My beloved congregation, please have a safe Memorial Day. Until we meet again, please take good care of yourselves. Be well. Shalom to you and goodbye.